I am more than likely going to be the first to introduce you to this show, but you should definitely do yourself a favor and enjoy the quirky, unique docu-comedy How To with John Wilson. It blends unique topics, John's distinct narration, and an almost omniscient, unfiltered view of the human experience. Let's deconstruct the simple complexity of How To with John Wilson. Maybe you can guess that the voice narrating is the guy with the name of the show title, but who is John Wilson? John is a filmmaker living in New York that seems to have a specialty in capturing humans like a nature documentary. We can start back in his early days in filmmaking looking at what he made 10 years ago. Uploaded on his Vimeo page is a video titled How to Live with Bed Bugs. From the title you can see that this style is something that's evolved over time. From his narration and funky floating font choice for the title card, he's been doing this for years and translates into the work we see now. Part of the reason he's got an eye for all of this footage is because he used to work for a private investigator and had to look through extensive hours of footage just for one thing to happen. First job out of college was actually working for a private investigator. I had to comb through hours and hours of the most banal footage you can imagine and try to find one little incriminating moment it really trained me to notice little details. I think this show was kind of born out of that. This gives some background as to why he has a desire to capture all of these raw moments around New York City. Any and everything could be used in the show and he seems to always have his camera ready to record what seems like an unending amount of footage. We literally see the world through his lens and he crafts a story around the amalgamation of footage he's captured. John mentions in this show episode about memories, how he's scared of forgetting things, and that's why he keeps that journal for 10 years. He also feels this way about capturing things in their current state. In an interview, he said, I wanted to preserve as much of New York as I could since I'm just worried about everything disappearing all the time. It's just my natural impulse to preserve and shoot anything that might be ephemeral and disappearing. That could be someone doing a handstand on the subway platform, or it could be a storefront that's going out of business. There's a level of boldness with what he does. To walk around with the camera and chat with strangers, not knowing the outcome, is something not many would do. But this is the goldmine of this show. The real conversations he has with random people and their experience gives insight into an assortment of things that you may have never thought about. Word a lot. One word, A-L-O-T, or is it two words? Sometimes, is it some S-O-M-E? Is it two different words? Or I actually call the Scotch Guard Company, and I'm like, when did you guys change your, your product name from Guard, G-U-A-R-D, to G-A-R-D? Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Is there a hidden meaning? Are we being communicated with somehow regarding these Mandela effects? As you can already tell, the style of this show separates itself from others, and I think it commands your attention with its quirky appeal. John is obviously the narrator, but he has his own distinct cadence. Ums, uhs, and pauses are all sprinkled in to give this sometimes intentionally awkward delivery that somehow flows and syncs with the footage shown. He's almost tying each word with the shot he's found out in the wild. This could be a fashion choice or a method of transportation. The way you move, the way you eat. A new haircut is good bait. Or you can just dress like a hose. This level of detail really sucks you into the show. And as the rhythm of word choices comes along, you're always wondering what kind of thing he's going to show you next. There's a ton of work that goes into the editing process, and it's a different experience to a big budget show. Instead of having shots that are staged and captured at multiple angles, John is dealing with real people who you can't get second takes of doing things. He captures a lot of footage and it has to be catalyzed and organized. As much as I wish this was just a one-man show, it does have a lot going on behind the scenes. While John is out filming, he has a van full of producers following him. Occasionally one of the producers in that van is actually Nathan Fielder, the genius behind Nathan For You and his new show, The Rehearsal. The show actually may have never happened had John and Nathan not met at a restaurant where they ended up talking about his older videos. What do you want to do? What's your vision? And he sends me this shot of a loaf of bread. John and Nathan worked closely together on edits, especially on the pilot. 
working multiple days in a row to make sure that everything was perfect. He was also instrumental in making sure the episodes had an overarching theme and message. Once it was picked up by HBO, the production for things needed to scale up. So instead of what seems like John capturing footage by himself, which may have been the case a good chunk of the time, now he was being followed by a van of producers, which included Nathan at times. So during these interesting interactions that could last for hours, the producers would have to wait and get a release for whoever he was speaking to so the footage can be aired without blurring faces. A typical production day for John can be eight hours or more. It's described as being pretty free form when finding footage. Outside of the few appointments to meet particular people on topics, John wanders around with a van in tow and seeing what he can find. The production team also has second units that will travel around the city collecting footage for the show as well. After a day of filming, John will take the footage from his camera and the second unit to examine through, categorizing what he can and put shots into different episode folders. So what does all of that behind the scenes work create? Let's talk about the show's structure. Each episode covers a topic that John wants to dive into, from small talk to memory to throwing out batteries or making the perfect risotto. John posits these videos as tutorials to guide you through to accomplishing something. But these are never as straightforward as the premise is presented. An episode about how to appreciate wine turns into a discussion about not fitting in with sophisticated wine groups that you can't seem to relate with, and then somehow going to a bowling ball manufacturer that specializes in scented bowling balls, and eventually detailing your acapella experience with Keith Rainier, and finishing up by talking with the CEO of Bang Energy at his wife's baby shower. That is the magic of this show. Every episode has layers to unpack. The simple premise is merely the surface of what the episode will eventually explore. One of my favorite examples of this is in episode 4 of season 1 with how to cover your furniture. The episode starts with John explaining the somewhat strained relationship he has with his cat. It keeps scratching at his sofa and he's looking for a solution to the problem and decides on covering his furniture. John takes his time to get insight from people who have had their furniture covered for a long time. From here, John deduces that some people are preserving the original item, but aren't really enjoying it. It's just something that's on display for them. Case in point being the woman who has these really fancy red shoes, but never wears them. He also explores how when we go to a museum, we're typically looking at a replica of the original piece. But through all of this discourse of replication and preservation, no personality was more shocking than this man. I'm gonna tug and grow my foreskin back again. I'm gonna tug and grow my foreskin back again. No matter the topic, you will inevitably find yourself in a place you weren't expecting. John gives every person he interacts with respect and an avenue to express themselves freely. And in the end, you learn and see things that are so unique. I think John sums it up well by saying, I love being able to have access to these really intimate spaces where people bond over this thing that you've never thought about for more than 10 seconds in your whole life, but it's their entire life. This show is candid, awkward at times. Of course, without clothes, because like I said, he was a nudist. And an overall joy. While simple in its presentation, there are layers of complexity and nuance to every topic tackled. John being the guide on these crazy journeys only makes it that much more enjoyable. It feels like we're discovering these crazy people in uncomfortable situations with him. And the way he explores what can seem to be a mundane topic into something deeper only draws you in that much more. There isn't much not to like about what this show has to say, and thankfully it's been picked up for a third season. I can't wait to see what weird topics John decides to cover next time. It's been about two and a half years since I've uploaded, so if you're watching this video, thank you so much. I think I'm back in a place to finally make some more videos for you guys, so let me know what shows or movies you want me to cover in the future. Leave a like and subscribe, and maybe I'll make another video before another two years passes. <laughs>